Thank you so much for watching our TV program, and we thank you for all that you do in helping us to reach out and touch the world with the miracle-working power of God's unconditional love. I want you to know that God's got a fresh anointing that's reserved just for you in this particular day and time, and you don't want to miss out on it, and it all comes from right in the Word of God. And so just keep reading the Word of God and trusting God. Amen. Now, right in this particular service, that uh, I want to talk about that the good news for the last generation, or you could say the good news for this day and time, God has got some good news. Uh, in the book of Matthew, turn your Bibles there, Matthew in chapter 24, and verse 14, and here's what Jesus said. And this gospel, now the word gospel in the original language, it says good news. And most people know that, but the gospel is the good news. It says, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And so there is a tremendous influence of God for people that are promoting good news because that's the major thing that God wants to do in the last days. He says the end will come. It's not going to come until the gospel has been preached in all the world. He said, and then it'll come. Now, I want you to look at the word gospel, or the word gospel is good news. And um, the word kingdom deals, it's the same word that Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 6, where he taught us to pray, and he says, pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And so there's no problems, no sickness, no diseases, and nobody missing bodily parts in heaven. And he says, pray that it be that way on earth as it is in heaven. I'll tell you what, that'll just let the world know that we serve a God that there's no other God that can compete with. Now, here's something that I, I've never seen this before until it was Thursday of last week. And I was reading this, and I seen where it said preached. And I, I know what that means, and in the original language it says, to proclaim or to publish. To proclaim and to publish the good news in all the world. And then I heard the Spirit of God telling me, he says, Mel, that's exactly the reason why I assigned you to publish the King James Truth Bible. And we now have it in, it, it's published, this Bible that I have right now. What I did, I started in 1974 looking intensely at every verse in the Bible, from the original writings of the Bible, and I begin to see words that demonstrates clear and stronger God's unconditional love for humanity. And my purpose for that was because of the fact many years ago, back in 1974, that I see in Ephesians 3.19, the Bible says that if you will know the love of God, that passes all knowledge, you'll be filled with the fullness of God. As I study the Bible, Jesus said all Scripture must be fulfilled. And so that verse has to be fulfilled. Can you imagine what will take place even in little Winsville, Missouri, if, if just half of the people is filled with the fullness of God? If you're filled with the fullness of God, you've got the reputation of God, you'll do the works of Jesus in greater. And that's a verse that I'm convinced that the devil hates more than any verse on the in, in, in the, the Word of God. And so this Bible will teach you from Genesis to Revelation about the love of God so you can be filled with the fullness of God. And Jesus told me, he says, I ordained you to put this in publication because it's the good news that has to be published in the whole world. Amen. And so... You out there that if you want to help me promote this Bible and get it all over the world, well, do what you can. And I want you to know that I'm not interested in one penny profit. I'm interested in getting the gospel published in the whole world. Amen. I'm more interested in heaven than earth. And so, and so what is good news? 
Well, what's good news to somebody that's sick? Healing. This good news has to be published, has to be preached, proclaimed in all the world. What's good news to somebody that's blind? Eyesight. What's good news to somebody that's deaf? Hearing. What's good news to somebody that's crippled? Strength to walk. What's good news to somebody that is missing a bodily part? A recreation of that part. That's good news. Amen. That's good news. And we're going to continue to proclaim it and publish it in the whole world. And, uh, and our TV ministry is available to the whole world now. And so now I want to look at some other verses. Turn your Bible to the book of Isaiah in chapter 61. Some other verses that um, gives us this same train of thought using other words. In fact, this is one of my major uh, concerns or mandates that I've got from God that I, I'm convinced that I'm a last days minister. And so I've got a lot of information about the last days. In fact, if you want to look at a lot of good scriptures validating what I'm talking about this morning, you can get a hold of my book, Neglecting the Ministry of Signs and Wonders is Neglecting the Rapture. For 2,000 years, uh, the body of Christ has been praying, fasting, and everything else, uh, trying to get God to do something, and for 2,000 years, God's waiting on us. He's waiting on us to become the glorious church because Ephesians 5, 27, the Bible says he's coming for a glorious church. That word glorious in the Greek is the word doxa in the original language and it means a church, a people that has the reputation of God. And so if you know the love of God, you know it. You've experienced it and you're giving it out. You'll be filled with the fullness of God. Wow. This is pretty powerful. Isaiah in chapter 61 and I'm just going to highlight some things because of the fact that we can cover more ground that way. And you can go home and see that I'm not taking things out of context. But sometimes even in one verse, one verse could cover maybe as many as three or four subjects. And so I want to deal with just our major thought that the Lord has given me concerning the last day's good news in each verse. And you can go home and Read the rest of the verse if you like, but I'm going to just focus on that train of thought. So in Isaiah chapter 61, and the last sentence, right after that semi semicolon, it says in verse 11, Isaiah 61, So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. This word righteousness, if you look in the original uh, writings, of the Bible, the original language. It's God's deliverance, God's victory, God's prosperity, God's health, things done that only God can do. And so God said it's going to spring forth and all nations is going to know about it. I'm believing next week all nations is going to know that we serve an almighty God. I'm believing, I, I pray that this place will be filled with people that are maimed. The word maimed, uh, in the original language is people that are missing bodily parts and those bodily parts are being recreated. Don't you know that's going to give God a lot of glory? That's going to black the devil's eye? Put the devil under our feet? Let the devil know that we serve a God that is more than enough? He's the one and only almighty God? That's our God. Amen. Let's flow on to chapter 62. Now, as you'll, if you'll do some studying and research, you'll find that the original language of the Bible, it didn't have chapters and verses. It didn't have uh, punctuation marks, that it all just flowed together. So really, uh, chapter 62 is part of chapter 61. And so looking at verse 1 of chapter 62, the major train of thought, that second sentence, here God is saying, I will not rest. He says, I'm not going to rest until the righteousness, therefore, go forth as brightness and the salvation, therefore, as a lamp that burneth. And so this same righteousness, he says, he's not going to rest. He's not going to rest until this righteousness. And we talked about it's God's victory. The manifestation is the power of God going forth in the whole world. And the word salvation, again, it has pretty much the same meaning as righteousness. It, salvation, 
from Genesis to Revelation. It, it means co-equally the word salvation from Genesis to Revelation, even though it's different languages. It means healing. It means health, having divine health. It means divine prosperity. It means deliverance. It means safety. And it means wholeness. That word, it, wholeness, those missing bodily parts being recreated. From Genesis, that, that's pretty powerful right there. And so God says that uh, he can't rest until this salvation, that it, that it goes forth and it burns. And then in, in verse, 20, uh, verse 2, I'm sorry, and the Gentiles, and the word Gentiles is in reference to people that were not Christians, not Jews. You know, not Jews, I'm sorry. And so now, um, we're Gentiles. The rest of the world, if you're not Jewish, you're a Gentile. And he says, and the Gentiles shall see this righteousness. And again, this righteousness, this power of God, this uh, manifestation of, of miracles in every area of thinking. And here the word see, in the original language, it says to literally enjoy and to experience. And so, the rest of the world, all of the world is going to see it and experience it and enjoy it. Amen. Amen. Let's go on. And all kings thy glory. And that word glory in the Hebrew, it has the same meaning as glory in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, it says the same thing. It says honor, the honor of God. The attribute, the characteristic of God, the reputation of God. That's what it says in the original language of the Bible for the glory. And so, in essence, we're, we've got God's glory. He says the Gentiles, the rest of the world, they'll experience it. And kings, it says thy glory, the glory that'll be upon you. I want to look at this in greater depth, validating this stronger as we go on. In the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped a, verse 3. And the glory, and thou shalt be called a new name, which is the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory. God says you'll be a crown. You'll wear the crown, the clothing of God's reputation in the hand of the Lord and the royal diadem in the hand of thy God. You can write this down because I'm just going to highlight some things real quickly. But in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 14, the Bible says clearly, it says, As the waters cover the earth, so shall the knowledge of the glory of the Lord cover the earth. As the waters, I'm sorry, as the waters cover the sea, so shall the knowledge of the Lord cover the earth. If you've ever been to the ocean, every square inch, is water. You can't go any place in the sea without there being water. And he said, as the waters cover the sea, so shall the knowledge of the glory, the reputation of God, cover the earth. Now God said he's not going to rest until this happens. That tells me clearly there's not one square inch of planet earth that's not going to see it and experience the reputation of God, the power of God. Now, as I study the Bible also, I see in Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5 that there is going to be a huge number, a sea of people, it says, that's caught up into the rapture, a number that no man can number. And so this glory, when it's poured out, you know, we can, we can talk a whole lot of talk. But as I study the Bible, Jesus did more walking than he did talking. He didn't just preach the gospel, but he demonstrated the gospel. Like the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter, was it chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, he says, I come not just with excellency of speech, but I come with demonstration and power. That word power is God's miracle working power. So that your faith would stand in the power of God and not just in the words of man. And I, I, I think I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and it's a good story, but I, I see this all over the world, that I can remember holding crusades in other countries 
and we just do get up and preach, and maybe we might get 75 people. But when I started telling people, come to receive miracles, we started having crowds of 35,000 people. Gone in countries like in India, that uh, half of the people was uh, Muslims, the other half was Hindus, they didn't believe in God. But when they seen the miracles, they didn't have, it, it didn't make it, see, they have all, there's 36,000 gods in, in the country of India. And so it's just, when you get up and just talk about your Bible, well, they've got all kinds of Bibles, but their God can't demonstrate the miracle working power of God. And I've seen 35,000 people in one service accept Jesus Christ as Lord because they've seen the miracles. The old saying is true. A pitcher tells a thousand words. Amen. And like I said a few weeks ago, I can remember in Japan, uh, a man that uh, was in the fox god religion. He's probably 35, 40 years old, 45, something like that. And uh, only the wealthy people are in the fox god religion. They have a statue of a, of a fox outside of their house, right outside their door. I've seen them. And every time they go in or out, they kiss that fox god and pray to it. Piece of stone. And so this man came to our service. He had all kinds of problems in his body and been living that way for like 20, 25 years. And I asked him, I says, uh, well, did you ever ask the fox god? He says, sure I have. For 25, 30 years, as long as I've had it. And I says, have you ever had any, did he ever help you? Even 1%? He says, not even 1%. And I says, well, I know a God that can take care of all of it. And I prayed for him, and he was about 60% instantly healed. And he, he did things he couldn't do for 20, 25 years. And uh, I asked him, how much better are you? And he said, well, I'm about 60%. And then he said this with his own mouth. You know, God hasn't given us the ministry of condemnation. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation, letting people know that God isn't holding anything against you. It doesn't make any difference what you've done, what you're doing. God's not interested in that. He's interested, can I embrace you with my loving kindness? And so that, that's all I did. I didn't tell him. I said, well, you're going to go to hell if you don't get rid of that fox god religion. That's true, but that isn't going to win anybody to the Lord, condemning him. And I, I just prayed for him. He got healed. And then after he got healed, 60%. Then he looked at me and he said these words. He says, I believe if I'll accept your God, accept your Jesus, then I'll get the whole healing. I says, you're right. He said that. He said that. Healing and miracles is the dinner bell for the gospel. It's the dinner bell. It isn't the preaching or the teaching. It's the demonstration of the miracle working power of God. So I prayed for him again. He got 100% healed. After he accepted Jesus as his Lord. I said, well, why don't we just do that? And he did. And he got 100% healed. Our God is a miracle worker. Amen. Amen. He's a miracle worker. Habakkuk 2, 14. Again, as the waters cover the sea, so shall the knowledge of the glory of God. Glory, the reputation of God, cover the earth. Now, of course, not everybody, as I study the Bible, I, I wish everybody gets saved, and they should. They should. That's pretty stupid to, to see the miracle working power of God and to reject it. But they will. And also, if you read in Revelation chapter 7, that you see there's a number that no man can number that accepts Jesus as their Lord, and they're in the tribulation period. They didn't make the rapture. Well, that means that uh, somehow or another, even though they experienced it, they've seen it, they still rejected, but there's going to be a great number that no man can number that will accept. Turn your Bibles to the book of John chapter 17, and uh, truthfully, we could just read this verse, and this could be the beginning of the message, and it could be the end, and we could just close, and uh, it says it all. John chapter 17 and verse... Uh, 21, I believe, is where, we're, where we want to start. We're talking about Jesus' prayer. This was the last prayer that Jesus prayed for you and I. 
and he prayed for you and I. Now, as you study the Bible, you'll find that Jesus, when he prayed, he always prayed the perfect will of God. So he prayed the perfect will of God for you. And another thing that you'll find as you study the Bible is that Jesus always got his prayers answered. He always got, him, got his prayers answered. And so this is the prayer that Jesus prayed for you and for me and for the whole world from his time forward. And let's look and see what he had to pray. Verse 20. Here's Jesus praying. As you read earlier, you'll see this was Jesus and he was praying. And he says, Neither pray I for those, for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through, now that word there in the original language is not there. And it's not there at all. They put that in there. And you can rightly see that people believe not because of somebody's word, but because of the word of God. And so those that believe through the word of God. So he's praying for those. And so how many is a believer? If you're a believer, Jesus prayed for you. You heard the word of God. And Jesus prayed for you. Now let's see what he prayed. Again, I want to look at the major train of thought. Right after that colon in verse 21, that's the next verse, it says, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The reason why Jesus prayed for us, so that the world would know. See, God loves the world. And now we are representations of God in this world. Do something that was difficult for you to do. Now here's, here's one thing, two things I want to tell you. That God's words are his seeds and all seeds have laws to germinate and God's laws, the way that in reference to his seeds to grow, are two things. Matthew 7, 7, seek and you'll find. Always focus on the better. That'll get God's seed to produce, to germinate. And then actions in James 2.20. That faith without works is dead. So do something to the best of your ability that was difficult to do before and focus on how much better you are. Being without pain, even just sitting, would be just, you know. <laughs> okay. We just see that wall right there? Or maybe this wall. That'd be a good one. So you don't have to get in anybody's way. Just run to that wall as fast as you can. Run back. Actions activates God's power. Okay, Russell, how much, how much relief do you have now? Good. How much would you say? About 90%. About 90%. Isn't God a good God? So you'll get the whole thing. All you have to do is initiate receiving it. Focus on the better. Hey. Hello, dear friend. If you or if you know of somebody that's blind, crippled, deaf, um, or they're maimed, they're missing a bodily part, I want to encourage you to come to our miracle service and receive that you'd be blessed and that God would be glorified. Our miracle services, they're going to start the first Saturday of each month, starting the month of May. It's going to be at 6 p.m., and it's going to be right here at Agape Church in Winsfield, Missouri. The address is 140 North Point Prairie in Winsfield, Missouri. The phone number is 636 327-5632. If you'll study your Bible, you'll find there's 264 verses right in the Bible that says the same thing as Mark 9, 23, when Jesus said all things are possible to them that believe. That's pretty powerful, 264 verses. There's also 118 verses in the New Testament in our Bibles that says the same thing as what Jesus did in Matthew chapter 15, verse 30, where it says great multitudes came to Jesus that were blind, deaf, crippled, incurable conditions, and the maimed. And it says right there that he healed the ones that needed to be healed, like the blind. And it says the maimed, he made them whole. The word whole in the Greek is he recreated a bodily part. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. I want to encourage you to come so that you'd be blessed 
God would be glorified. We are now blessing people. People are being blessed. God's being glorified. We're making a fool out of the devil. Hello, dear friend. God wants you to be filled with his fullness. As I study the Bible, I find there's many scriptures in the Bible that are very clear, like Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19, where the Bible plainly teaches us that God says he wants us to know how much he loves us unconditionally that passes all knowledge, and this will cause us to be filled with the fullness of God. If we're filled with the fullness of God, then John chapter 14, verse 12 through 14 will become a reality in our life where that we can do the works of Jesus and greater so that God could be glorified and so that people would be blessed and so that you would be blessed. And it all hinges on us knowing the great depths of love that God has for us. Well, since 1974, I have studied intensely the original languages of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and I found a great amount of verses and words, a huge amount of verses and words that go into much greater detail in the original language, showing us the great depths of God's unconditional love that he has for the human race. And I've taken all of that information, all of those verses and all of those words, and I've placed it in the King James Bible. I now have it in print. We have a Bible that is called the King James Truth Version. It's made first class with genuine leather, and it has all that information so that you can know how much God loves you that passes all knowledge so that you could be filled with the fullness of God. You can get your copy, if you would like, by going to our website, which is melbon.com. Go to the bookstore section, and you'll find the Bible there. And it's for $125 if you want one copy. If you want two copies, you can get two of them for $200. And this takes in shipping and handling. I am absolutely convinced that this Bible is going to be a major tool that's going to bring in the great harvest, going to bring many people into the kingdom of God. Many people are going to be blessed. God's going to be glorified. And uh, you're going to be filled with God's fullness, and that's a tremendous desire of God. God wants you to be filled with His fullness. Thank you for watching Last Day Signs and Wonders with Mel Bond. For more teaching and information, check out our website at melbond.tv or write us at Agape Church, P.O. Box 306, Wentzville, Missouri, 63385, or call our office at 636-327-5632. Keep up to date by friending us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Last Day Signs and Wonders is made possible by the generous gifts of our partners. Please consider becoming a partner and help Mel Bond take this message of Last Day Signs and Wonders around the world.